Dominique Dunn, a beautiful and young actress. For three years, she explored with the world of TV and film, showing the world that she was fit for the industry. With a promising future in the palms of her hands, she succeeded. That is, until she had her career cut short as she died in the palms of someone else's hands. Born November 23rd. In 1959, in Santa Monica, Dominique Dunn was engulfed with a family of actors, novelists, and producers. Most likely, this is what destined her for the direction she would take in her life. Her education mainly consisted of attending boarding school in Los Angeles, Watertown in Connecticut, and Fountain, Colorado. Once she graduated, she would go to Florence and learn Italian for the year she spent there. She would go to Milton Katzler's workshop and find herself in productions such as West Side Story, The Mousetrap, and My Three Angels. Her first big break came in the 1979 television film Diary of a Teenage Hitchhiker. It would be the eye-opener for her and her career as she would spend the early 1980s appearing in other TV series and TV films. Then, in 1981, Dunn had her chance to star in Poltergeist, a Steven Spielberg produced film that would be released the following year, 1982. She had the chance to be cast only a few more times in miniseries and other television episodes after her poltergeist casting. In 1981, Dominique Dunn had actually begun a relationship and missed her acting career. John Thomas Sweeney, who was about 25 years old at the time, lived with her for about a year in what became a very negative relationship. Sweeney was an extremely possessive and jealous type of guy leading his actions to become physically abusive towards Dunn. On August 27th, Sweeney attacked Dunn, apparently ripping hair from her roots, causing her to flee to her mother's house. She would be chased there, and he would bang on the doors and windows, demanding she come out and return to him. It would be a few days later that Dominique Dunn would voluntarily come back home and continue her relationship with Sweeney. Just under a month later, on September 26th, Sweeney made an attempt to strangle Dominique before a friend came back to check on the commotion. She claimed he tried to kill her, but it was played off and Sweeney demanded she come to bed for the night. Dominique would sneak to the car in the night and wake Sweeney with the engine. He jumped on the car's roof as she drove away. At one point, she had stopped so he could get off the car and let her leave. She ended the relationship at the disapproval of Sweeney. She'd spend the next few days with her mother and friends before changing the locks of her home and moving back in, alone. Finally, October 30th came when the two would meet again. Dunn and Sweeney, Dunn and Sweeney spoke through locked doors and would eventually agree to speak on the porch as David Packer, an actor she was practicing with, remained inside the house for the meantime. After a short time, the two began to argue, and Packer heard smacks, a thud, and screams. The police were called, and Sweeney openly gave in to the authorities, claiming he killed his girlfriend and tried to kill himself. Dominic Dunn was not dead at the scene, but was unconscious and in a coma. She was taken to the Cedars Sai Medical Center and remained on life support for five days before her parents consented to letting her pass. Her funeral was on November 6, two days after her death. She is buried at the Westwood Village Memorial Park Cemetery. The trial against Sweeney began in August of 1983, almost a year after the altercation that ended her life. Sweeney pleaded his case, arguing he had not been intending to harm Dunn and rather acted out of surprise to a sudden change in plans from Dominique. He argued they had been making plans of creating a life together before she changed everything all at once. He had no recollection of the attack, except that he saw her not breathing and that he had tried to take pills inside the house and attempt to kill himself. The court ruled his actions were not premeditated or done with malice, leaving them with the conclusion that it was in the heat of passion. This was later dismissed as there was no evidence of his attempted suicide and investigators determined that he had strangled her for over three minutes, which would have been enough time to stop his actions consciously 
in the heat of the moment, if he so choose to do. After an ex-girlfriend testified, an outbreak in the courtroom, and a breakdown from Sweeney following the outbreak, a conclusion came. On September 21st of 1983, John Thomas Sweeney was found not guilty of the charge of second degree murder, but was found guilty for voluntary manslaughter. He was also found guilty for misdemeanor assault for his altercation from September 26 of 1982. John Sweeney's sentence was highly disapproved as many believed he murdered with malice. The jury and judge received much heat for the situation as they had not entirely listened to the testimony of Sweeney's ex-girlfriend. He was to serve six years for the manslaughter charges and six additional months for the assault charges. He was released on parole after only three years, seven months, and 27 days. Sweeney went on to work to be a chef but was tracked by the Dunn family in attempts to ruin his work, his newly forming relationship, and any aspects of his life they could. It wasn't until he moved to the Pacific Northwest that John Thomas Sweeney was left alone to continue his life without direct involvement from the Dunn family. He is about 65 years old as of this year. Yeah? Are you Cindy? Yeah, what do you want? Is this your baby? I don't know nothing about a baby. Well, the lady downstairs says she's seen you with him. She's crazy. What is it? What's wrong here? It's nothing, Mama. What's the little whore done now? I didn't do nothing. We were looking for the mother of this abandoned child. Hey, hey, hey. In 1982, uh, I had three kids. I had uh, two boys and I had a daughter called Dominique. And Dominique was, uh, you know, my only daughter. I worshipped her. And um, she uh, became an actress. And uh, almost instantly, I mean, she, Steven Spielberg cast her in Poltergeist. And uh, she, there was a, a restaurant called Ma Maison, a big, famous Hollywood restaurant. And the chef there uh, they had a romance. And he um, stalked her. She became frightened. She never told us he was abusive to her. And he killed her. He killed her. And it it was something that just changed the lives of all of us in my family, my wife, my two boys, me. Did you know the guy before this happened? Had you met him? Hell yeah. Met him. None of us liked him. And, you know, he thought it was because it was a class thing, that he was the whatever, and he thought we were this. And, uh, but that wasn't why. It was, there was something creepy about this guy. But women liked him. Did you try talking to Dominique about it? Well, no, we didn't know that he was abusive, you see, until it was too late. 